Pillarverse did a pretty good job, but this ink from Robert Oster has got to be my favorite monsoon sky. Now, I know the special edition ink from Colorverse was called Monsoon Storm, but this Pen Chalet limited edition is what happens when Robert Oster takes a crack at it. And while I thought about doing a comparison video, I figured that this ink needed a showcase of its own. So if you want to compare the two, take a look at the video that I did for the Colorverse versions that I'm going to have linked. That aside, let's go into the TLDW and take a look at this amazing ink. I like how this ink combines the soothing greens reminiscent of Arizona pine country with the subtle deep blues of a heavy rain. The dry time is very respectable on both Tomoe and Rhodia. It's lubricated enough to where I don't have to fear hard starting, yet well behaved enough that I don't have to worry about feathering. And I really like that even from a fine nib, I can flirt with those transition tones and occasionally kick over into a subtle sheen. The only thing I'm not liking is the water resistance, which I find slightly ironic given that Monsoon is in the name. But overall, I think we have a winner here and a good companion to the limited edition Antelope Canyon. I'm gonna have that one linked as well. Let's start off with the overall feel of the ink. Like I said in the TLDW, this is more of a bluish green than it is a strong showing of either color. In this case, that's not a bad thing. When I spoke with Ron at Penn Chalet about the inspiration for these inks, I was told that he provided Robert Oster with photos and just said go for it. Now that I know this, these inks actually kind of make more sense. Now, looking at the right, we see greens that remind me of the forests just below the Magoyan Rim, which is just east and northeast of Payson, Arizona. Here's a photo I took from the rim for reference. You can see how the ink blot also incorporates some of the subtle blue that you get from both the midday haze, as well as the descending moisture of a heavy desert rain. Now, if we focus on the left blot, I want to look at those transition tones. These are probably my favorite green-blue transition tones in a Robert Oster ink, and I think the sheen here is very well done. As far as the dry times are concerned, the story is pretty much the same on both Rhodia and Tomoe. When we switch from one to the other, while Rhodia is slightly quicker on the draw, they are both functionally dry at under 10 seconds, which is definitely a step up from the over 20 seconds to dry from the Colorverse version. Once again, that video is linked down below. And before we jump into the writing experience and overall thoughts with this ink, let's take a look at the water performance. I've got to say, as water was initially laying on the page, I was expecting a little bit better. Sure, there was a little bit of color lifting, but it didn't look as bad as what we got once we actually dry the page. I mean, this is a pretty faint ghosting layer that's underneath. While it's not a deal breaker per se, it's good to know that if you're a clumsy person like myself, where you know you're going to be spilling something on a notebook at some point in the future, this is something that you really want to have in mind. And yes, with me, it really does happen that often. Now for the writing sample, we're starting with my favorite combination. On Tomoe, we're getting a pretty good look at the full dynamic range on offer. Well, as long as you're willing to slow down the tempo a little. Slower riders will start in a forest haze green and occasionally fade up into the pale pine needle green. As you pick up the tempo, it does brighten up a little into those softer hazy greens. Keep in mind though, that this is from a fine nib. So if you have a pen with a good feed on it, then it's pretty easy to extrapolate how the overall tone would be impacted. A faster rider with a medium or broad nib will see the same results as a slower rider with a fine nib, just due to the well-controlled properties found in Robert Oster inks. And much like the heavy rain, as the overall tones get deeper, the blue tones go from a subtle addition to an equal companion commanding as much of the stage as those deeper greens. Now, as we shift over to Rhodia, this is more of a study in deeper green. While faster riders will still see more of the lighter pines, the deeper tones will present themselves for you a lot easier in a medium nib with good flow. Us slower riders, though, definitely trade the dynamics that we saw on Rhodia for a riding experience that stays in those transition tones. This is from a fine nib, so anyone riding at my pace or slower with a good flowing feed are going to need an extra fine to pull off those lighter pines. If you like the darker transition tones though and enjoy spending more time in those deeper mids, then this is a good combination for you. 
It's also a combination that will yield a better sheen rate, and that kind of surprised me a bit. One last bit though, if you're a slower rider and you like juicy nibs, take a look at how this performs in the zoom nib on my Sailor Pro Gear Slim. That combination brings out the full forest and then some. So that's our quick look at Monsoon Sky from Robert Oster, available at Penn Chalet. Thank you for watching to the end. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and while you're down there, consider becoming a patron. Until next time, don't drink the ink.